So here we're going to talk about the chair conformations of cyclohexane. Um, we normally see cyclohexane uh, written in 2D as a flat molecule, but if you actually turn cyclohexane on its side, you'll see that cyclohexane actually resembles what we call a chair, like a lawn chair. So we see the yellow outline here, we're going to zigzag that, and if we look at a lawn chair, we can outline that the exact same way and see that same pattern, that zigzag pattern. And so the chair conformation here for cyclohexane, uh, that's where the name comes from, the fact that it resembles a lawn chair. All right, so let's look at uh, this in a little bit more detail. Um, we're going to look at the fact that these hydrogens, the red hydrogens that are pointed up and down, uh, we call those hydrogens axial. And cyclohexane, because of this conformation, has actually a top face and a bottom face, right? If you look at the bottom face and the top face, you'll notice that there's three hydrogens pointed up and three hydrogens pointed down. Those are what we call our axial hydrogens, all right? The axial hydrogens are pointed up, and then if you look at the green hydrogens, those are what we call our equatorial hydrogens, and those are pointed out away from the ring. And we'll see here, uh, if we turn this ring flat uh, in this little picture that's coming up, if we turn the ring flat, we see the green hydrogens pointed out, uh, basically forming an equator around the ring. So that's why we call those equatorial hydrogens. All right. And so looking at the two ax the three axial hydrogens, we say that those hydrogens are in a one-three relationship. And because of that, um, there are some interactions that take place at these axial sites that we'll talk about in a little bit. But if you turn it to the side, you can see even better that there's a uh, one, two, three on the left side and one, two, three on the right side. So those are in a one, three relationship and we call that a one, three diaxial interaction. All right, so because of that, uh, you'll see later anything you put in an axial position uh, is gonna pose a problem, all right? And the same interactions are present on the bottom face. And um, those hydrogens on the bottom face are also in that same 1, 3 relationship. All right, so um, let's talk about monosubstituted cyclohexane rings. I uh, said a second ago, if you put a uh, substituent in the place of one of those axial hydrogens, then you're going to have a little bit of a problem. And the reason you'll have a little bit of a problem, again, you see the chair outline. The reason for the problem is that those axial hydrogens are not happy sharing their space with another axial substituent. So you see the methyl group boxed off uh, in yellow. That's now an axial substituent. And so when you look at this, if we turn it to the side a little bit, we can see that the methyl group is actually going to interact with the axial hydrogens that are shown up top. All right, that's again, we call it there in a 1-3 relationship. Uh, and we call that um, a 1-3 diaxial interaction. So Look at the numbers here, 1, 2, 3 on the left side, 1, 2, 3 on the right side, and we call that a 1, 3 diaxial interaction. All right? That 1, 3 diaxial interaction happens for both axial hydrogens, and because of that, because it happens for both axial hydrogens, um, each interaction costs some energy. All right? So for one, inter one interaction, it's 3.8 kilojoules per mole, and then because there are two axial hydrogens, we're going to have two um, interactions that take place on that face where that methyl is axial. And so the energy goes up to uh, 7.6 kilojoules per mole. All right. Because of that, we need to have a, a way to reduce the energy because, again, in chemistry, everything is looking to reduce its energy. And so we have to do what's called a chair flip. So you'll see in conformer A on the left, the blue carbon is up, the red carbon is down. And then if we, in order to do a chair flip, we have to push the blue carbon down and push the red carbon up. And so recall the axial sites are up and down, all right? So we want that methyl to no longer be axial, but equatorial. So let me show you in real time with the model. Notice in the model, my uh, methyl is axial, right? I have it's pointed up on one of those up positions. I need to push that, take that carbon and push it down in order to perform a chair flip. So I push that carbon down and then I take the back carbon and push it up, right? Push up on the back carbon and now I've performed my chair flip. What you'll notice now is that the methyl group 
um, I'll show you in one second. The methyl group is actually now equatorial. It's no longer axial. And so because it's now equatorial, the energy of that um, chair conformation has been decreased. Notice the green hydrogens that were equatorial before are now axial. And the red hydrogens that were axial before are now equatorial. So in a chair flip, everything that was axial goes equatorial, and everything that was equatorial goes axial. So we can see that here in the models, right? On the left side, that's the uh, initial ring that we started with. The red hydrogens are up, the green hydrogens are down. And then on the right side, we can see uh, the methyl is now equatorial after the chair flip and the green hydrogens are now axial and the uh, red hydrogens are now equatorial and that's the reason for that is again this this molecule doesn't want to stay in this higher energy state with that methyl group being in an axial position so it conforms itself such that the methyl uh, can be in a low energy position we call this conformational mobility that's the ability of a chair to adopt a more stable conformation and the, the reason it's able to do that is because you have that rotation around those carbon-carbon bonds. So we'll talk more about this in class, and we're going to look at some di-substituted uh, models as well. And if you have any questions, just send me an email, and we'll get everything sorted out. All right? Thanks.